I've always had a problem at the front of my house with my house numbers being too small. They're so hard to see from the street, especially for deliveries. The first step is to print out on my printer in a large font all the numbers that I need. Once you get these cut out, tape it down to some foam board that you can get from Dollar Tree. Now, the font that I found was not large enough, so I took a ruler, put it on the edge of all my numbers, and I traced around the sides. This gives me a thicker number to work with. Cutting it out is easy though. You just can take an X-Acto knife or any type of razor blade. Put some cardboard underneath, that way you won't cut through to your table. Press firmly, but go slow. We wanna make sure that we get right along the lines and as straight as possible. Go ahead all the way on the outside. Now, if there's any chance that you did not cut all the way through, you can go back very lightly and make sure you cut. Get all the outside, including any inside cuts that you need to get. Once it's cut out, go ahead and pull it all the way out, including that inside, and it pops right out. And there's our number. Now, the secret is we gotta turn it upside down because we're gonna make a mold of our number, but it's gotta be a mirror image. So, with some painter's tape, I just go ahead and put it on the bottom of the number halfway and then I cut out some two inch strips of foam. These are straight and I put them along the edge as I measure and I tape them up the side. You're going to do this all the way around each one of your numbers. Once you get all of these up, look at this nice form that we made out of the number and again, it's a mirror image. Next, I got a wood dowel, and I'm gonna put this in the bottom. Just push it through, it'll eventually pop through, and this is gonna go inside our form. Once we get that, pour a little bit of water in your mixing bucket, and put some regular old concrete in there. Now, make sure you do this outside, it does get pretty dusty. You wanna make sure you don't mix too much, and if you need to mix it by hand, a little bit at a time is always best. Now I put some gloves on because concrete can go ahead and be a little irritant to the skin. Once you put these gloves on, you can just go ahead and slowly scoop it in. I recommend not pouring it in because this is a foam outline. So we want to make sure it goes in nice and neat. Once you get it in, go ahead and give it a little bit of shaking, just like some jello, and then you're going to tap the edges. This is going to get rid of any bubbles on the side. Just go all the way around, back and forth, but very gently so we can get rid of any bubbles and it'll fill it in. After 24 hours, you can go ahead and pull all of the foam away. It's gonna come out really nice. Now, once you get it all off, let it dry a little bit longer and you can paint it and do anything you want with it. But use the dowels and you're gonna stick it into the ground and it's absolutely gonna turn out amazing. This is my final project out by our front yard, and that way, any future deliveries, we know that they're gonna see our address. I hope this inspired you to build your own DIY concrete house numbers. Thanks for watching Home Talk. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to start off with a board. I just kinda of use what we had on hand. It is a two by eight, but you can use whatever size you want. But I recommend a two by eight because the thickness is actually just right for these screws I'm gonna show you how to use. I um, went ahead and pre-stained this front side here, but just to show you what I was working with, I didn't stain the back, which I'm, I'll finish that later. It does take about, I gave it a day to go ahead um, for the stain to dry, so I went ahead and pre-did that. But here's, if you wanna know what color I used, I used this in Mission Oak. And as it's outside, it will fade over time, but it kind of matches all the other wood we have outside in our house, so it kind of ties together nicely. Okay, so you're gonna wanna go online and buy your house numbers in whatever style you like. I personally really like the kind of more modern and clean style. So I went ahead and bought mine. And they kind of come like this, but this actually used, they came silver. And I used my trusty gold spray paint and I did one coat on each number. So that just for me, I personally like the gold and wood and I already have that in other places in our house as well. So it kind of ties together nicely. And what you're gonna wanna do is take your first number. We'll just do this one at a time. And as you can see here, Really easy, all of them have a top and a bottom. We're gonna go call these nail screws here. So really easy, just screwing them in till you can't turn it anymore and you have your number. And the reason these are on screws is they'll kind of stand off of it about an inch or maybe half an inch, which is cool. I'm gonna actually uplight this too. So you're gonna see how kind of cool it is at night whenever the light's shining up on it and how it kind of like gives a cool shadow, shadow effect. So that's why these are on the standoffs. And here's our drill and I have a 3 16 inch drill bit, which I'm gonna use. 
um, as pilot holes. It makes it much easier. So what you see here is I pre-marked all my spots where these will go in. So what I did here is push these in and I pushed really hard and these points actually left an indentation in the wood. So after that, just so I can see it better, I went ahead and just went over it with my permanent marker. So I did that for every number and I'm doing four. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. All we're doing here is taking your 3 16 inch drill bit and drilling all the way in. It's wise to almost go all the way through the board. You, you know, you don't want to go all the way through maybe, but I think since this is almost the depth of the board, you'll kind of just see what how deep your wood is. You could choose to not go in as far. So just kind of see what kind of wood you have and go from there. Here's the next one. Okay, and you just brush that aside. And as you see, I have two holes that will be lined up here. You are gonna need a hammer or maybe even one of those um, mallets that's like rubber mallet. I'm just using a regular old hammer, but I don't wanna damage the number. So I'm gonna like, I just found this, you know, you know, on a pile. I'm just gonna go ahead and have this in between it so it doesn't damage the metal. But all you're doing is lining up the number like so. And as you see, it already kind of goes in nicely. You're just gonna wanna kind of push it in just a little bit. And pretty sturdy and it's pretty even. I just need to push it in a little bit more at the top. All right, if you want to get a depth shell, shot of that to show kind of how deep I went in. So I'm going to do that for all of them. This will go pretty quick now, I think, once we've gotten started here. So take my next number, just making sure I have my right markings here. What I did, I'm going to mark this one again just because it's a little hard to see. But that's it. Just keep doing the same steps. I'm gonna hold this up so we can get a good shot of it. Everything's in really sturdily. And the reason I left so much negative space at the bottom of mine, I will show you, but I'm gonna have a plant in front of it outside. This is gonna go in between our garage doors. We have a little spot that's about double the width of this. So I'm gonna kind of lean this on the wall and put the plant in front of it. And I actually love up lighting. So I'm going to have the light kind of shining up on it. And it's gonna look super cool at night. But if you choose to, you can go ahead and just chop your wood off. You know, make sure it's kind of symmetrical at the top and bottom. You could go ahead and chop it off, which is what we did on um, our house numbers right by our front door. So you can do that, and then you can um, just install them in with maybe like a masonry brit, masonry bit and some screws into your brick or whatever kind of house um, exterior you have. So really, it's up to you. Um, I don't know. I'm going to get your opinion on and see kind of what you think of what I'm going to do with it. So I am going to go ahead and turn this off, get it set up, and I'm going to have you guys meet me outside. Okay, I'm back outside. I'm going to show you the super quick and easy setup. This only takes a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. As you see here, reminder, I have all this negative space because I have a plan to use a plant on a stand that I got to kind of elevate it. So again, you can just choose to chop this part off, whatever you wish. So all you're doing is leaning it up wherever you want it to go. This is kind of a perfect spot for in between our garage doors. And then I have this plant stand. I got it at a thrift store, but you can find them online. It just kind of helps elevate your plant a little bit, but you don't have to have it. And then on the back side, I have this up lighting. These are really affordable from Amazon, and I think they come in a set of two or three and they're really good um, for energy usage as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that in the back side, like so, and just kind of have it, sorry, my asparagus friend is gonna hate me, <laughs> but have it kind of pointing up at the numbers. So you just plug her in, and it's daylight, obviously, so you're not gonna be able to see the cool effects of the uplighting, but I'm gonna come back, because it's gonna get dark here pretty soon. I'm gonna come back and show you how it looks at night. I'm back and it's dark and now you can see kind of how impactful that uplighting is on the sign. So what do you guys think? Um, would you leave it as is, kind of tilt it against the wall? Or if it were you, would you chop it off and then actually screw it into the walls? I want to hear your opinions because I'm kind of having a hard time to decide. But I do love the way it turned out and um, I thank you all so much for joining me and um, make sure you click the follow button so you don't miss my next episode. Thanks guys.